Hey guys, what's happening? So, um, so I bought another one of these uh, EC300 Digital Dream. Um, I'm not sure if it's still made by Novasun or not. Um, that's what I'm trying to figure out because the original first design, the NVEM, the Ethernet version of it, the NVEM, which I have, I currently have in my router, and I'll show you that real fast. All right, so if you're new to my channel, this is my 6090 CNC router, and then. So I'm currently running the NVAM or NVEM in this machine, and I have an EC300 in my other mill, that mill right there. Um, but I do actually have a EC500 coming in from China. I tried to buy one uh, months ago, but they were out of stock. I mean, nobody was—they were selling them, but nobody could ship them. So you'd buy them on AliExpress, and then. Uh, you know, they wouldn't uh, ship them. So you give them their money, then have to refund you. So, um, this is it. So this is the EC300. Um, this is very similar to the EC500, except it's a little bit slower. The step pulse rate is a little bit slower. I think this one is, um, I should say right on the cover what it is, the actual pulse rate. Um, 300 kilohertz. Whereas I think the EC400 or EC500 is either 500 or 400. But I'll make a review of that thing once I get it. So I'm going to be replacing the, the NVEM with uh, an EC500. So I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this one or not. Uh, my issue is is that it's um, three access. I need, I need like four and five access. Because um, I want to be doing like a fourth access like on, a, on an indexer. So I'm not going to keep this probably. Um, so the other one coming in is a six access, the EC500. But I just wanted to take a look at this because I didn't really see any... I don't even see like a, any sort of pictures on the internet of the actual PCB of this thing. I mean, I see the, uh, the EC500 PCB um, on the uh, Linux CNC uh, page, but it looks very similar to the EC500. And uh, I'll go through some of the stuff that I know so far what this is. So, um, first thing I look at this also, you have your 32 bit ARM processor, and this uh, translates the uh, in Mach 3 the parallel signals. Parallel port signals into a uh, Ethernet signal and translates it um, via the plug-in. And you have a bunch of OPA couplers here, and then you have uh, this is your digital analog converter, which is the uh, analog output for the spindle, zero to ten volt. Um, I'm guessing since this that this is for the um, um, the MPG, so I currently actually run a NV MPG right here. And this is, I have EC300 in there. Made another videos about that one. But, um, and this is actually the outputs right here on, on a 9 pin. So my NVIM, it's actually coming out the back of it. And then I, I kind of really like this 9 pin thing, you know, the 9 pin serial. It looks like an RS-232, but it's not. Um, but I'm guessing these are probably optic couplers too. I'm not sure what this would be. Um, I guess you don't, I, don't, I mean, I don't know if you'd want an optic coupler. So I guess I could just follow the traces back here. Um, but one thing I had actually messed around with for a while is actually hacking the access count on these things. Um, and I'll show you. I tried it with the NVEM. Um, it's the same thing. It's the three access. But what's funny is I bought it on eBay and it was supposed to be six access and it came as three access. But it had a six access sticker. I don't know if somebody swapped it or not. Um, pretty cool board. That's a switch for the NVEM. The and if you want to switch between a standard MPG and an NVMPG, the color one. Um, basically Ethernet. I think it's a 100 megabit Ethernet. As, as far as I know, on the, my other computer, I'm, uh, yeah, I statically assign the, uh, the rate to uh, 100 megabits. Because that's actually what I was getting. It, they're, so they're still using the holder 100 megabit controller. Um, but the cool thing about this board is like the EC500 didn't have this header on it. So this header is if I wanted to flash like the or more you know Linux CNC firmware, I'd hook up my um, my ST Link, which is over here somewhere. Here it is. My ST Link. I'd use my ST Link to this thing, and I'd connect it here, and I would actually flash. So I had messed around with Linux CNC in my NVEM. Um, but I mean I, I don't know. They're they're both cool, you know. I mean I think Linux CNC is a little bit more of a learning curve, but. You know, I'm an IT guy. My background is IT, and I work with Linux systems all day long. Different web servers and um, phone systems, etc. Um, 
So I'm not scared to play around with Linux. All right, um, what else? Okay, so this was the tricky thing. Um, maybe I'll put here. And they purposely do this too. And some of the stuff coming out of, out of China, they'll um, they'll purposely not label the actual EEPROM. And that's actually what I'm thinking this is. This is an EEPROM. Because there was even talk about it in the forum, the Linux CNC forum, that there's an, un there's an unknown component on the EC500 board and also the NVMe, right? But it doesn't run like it doesn't run your typical standard pinout of an EEPROM. But the unique thing about this EEPROM, which I think, is that all the access count information, um, because this thing's already been already uh, wired out for for six access, right? It has all the components to do it, but it's being limited in this EEPROM right here. So, um, if I could find a way of hacking this EEPROM then I could probably change the access count and like, you know, the serial number, etc. But this, I mean, I guess I could reverse engineer and try to figure out what the pins are. Like, I know the right-hand side is 3.3 volt, the left-hand side is ground, but that's not like, it's, it's very different from your typical EEPROM. And they purposely don't label it, it just says IC on it. Um, you know, purpose, purposely says IC on it. So, you won't know what the pinout is and you, know, you won't know what kind of EEPROM it is. Um, you know, but I mean, like I said, the only difference is a cup like thirty bucks to buy the different, you know, buy different access. So I don't know if it's worth. I mean, obviously it's a fun. It'd be, it'd be a fun hobby or project or a challenge to to hack into it. But yeah, I just don't know. I mean, for thirty bucks, I mean, it's fun, but it's. I mean, I guess I, I'm busy with other stuff too. Um, but yeah, I don't have hack many e problems. So it's not. That's not. I'm not limited by that. So. Um, yeah, going back to the satellite card days and just hacking cable modems and cloning modems and back in the day when they really had no security on a DOS or cable modem network. Um, okay, yeah, cool, cool, cool board. I mean, like I said, it's so far I've had pretty good luck with the on my the mill. Uh, but like I said, I'm probably just gonna take this back because I'm. Well, I wanted to make sure the EC500 was actually gonna come. So, I actually got this on Amazon. But yeah, if you guys are wondering, uh, this is probably the first video I've seen so far, or even pictures of this actual PCB, the, e the EC300. Um, yeah, it's a much better design than the NVM because it's, uh, they, they use actually better connectors. You know, because the problem with the, I think with the NVE, NVEM is that the connectors are so small that it was hard to get, even just for the steppers, it was hard to get them all in the same, you know, connected to each other. They were way too tight. Especially if you actually ran like a, like a ferrule on there. But, okay, well that's just a, I mean, it's just a video to see what this board looks like. Quick once over. And then once the EC500 500 comes in, I'm going to swap out the controller on the uh, 6090 CNC router. Alright, cool.